Good morning, everyone. So how are you all doing? Great? Very good. OK, so in the next few minutes, we will talk about the HPE GreenLake Edge to Cloud platform. In the last two days, you heard from Antonio, from Fidelma, the future enterprise is going to be edge-centric, cloud-enabled, and data-driven. 70% of the workloads today are outside public cloud. 50% of the data resides at the edge. And if you look at the enterprises, whether it is in financial vertical, manufacturing, retail, whichever may be the vertical, all enterprises want to derive insights out of data. And they want to provide differentiated products and services to their customers and delight their customers continually. So using data is of great importance for all of these customers. So in order to do this, of course, they will have to deal with a hybrid multi-cloud deployments. When you ask these enterprises, they say that hybrid cloud is a rule, not an exception. So let's look at an example of a customer. This is a global retail company. They have a hybrid multi-cloud deployment, 100,000 employees worldwide, 1,000 locations, 500 applications to serve their own employees, their suppliers, their customers, and partners. Out of the 500, they have 100 of those applications running in two public clouds. They have 10,000 servers in their edge locations, data centers, and some of those data centers are in co-location facilities. They also have private cloud deployments. And in their branch sites and data centers, they have 2,000 switches, 100,000 access points, some of them in their storefront locations as well. And in their data centers, there are 200 storage arrays. This is a complex deployment, a huge deployment that a customer need to worry about. So how do they manage the complexity? First of all, what are the complexities that show up in this type of an environment to build, manage, and operate all of the infrastructure, the applications to provide what the, their customers need and their partners are looking for. So let's look at the complexities. The complexities come from the environment, the disparate infrastructure, the workloads and applications that they need to run in this hybrid multi-cloud, which is heavily distributed. And these applications can be running on bare metal servers, VMs, containers, and they need to manage using tools across this uh, hybrid multi-cloud. And lack of visibility, because of this distributed nature, visibility is an issue. And lack of visibility leads to inconsistent operations. I'm sure you all must have faced situations where the customers are blaming the IT, your own internal engineering is blaming the IT because something is not available. So the IT operations want to recover from these situations much faster. And as a CIO, I'm sure the CIOs face this issue day in, day out. The budgets are getting thin. They are stripped down. And they have been asked to sign checks. They don't know 
where the employees have deployed their workloads, how much infrastructure is already in use, how much infrastructure is uh, to be deployed. So this becomes a costly affair. Now, this distributed infrastructure leads to cybersecurity risks as well. Cybersecurity is important for every enterprise. This can cost money. This can cost downtime. Also, cost uh, reputation risk as well. And sometimes, not all the time, sometimes IT gets blamed for not providing the infrastructure and operations in a faster manner to deliver innovations to the end customers. And many workloads cannot move to public cloud. And to operate those legacy workloads, you need the skill set. You need people with those skill sets. And sometimes this can cause uh, risk to uh, you know, providing, again, best service to their own end customers. So how do we solve all these challenges? This is not one and done, and these challenges keep evolving. So how do we solve these issues? This is where the GreenLake, HPE GreenLake Edge to Cloud platform comes into picture. So if you look at the platform, this is designed for distributed enterprises to solve exactly the complexities we just saw in the previous uh, picture. The GreenLake Edge to Cloud platform as a foundation is a one place where the customers can avail all the services. Networking, storage, compute, workload orchestration services, whether they want to deploy in a VM or a container or a bare metal fashion, all of those are available to the customers. And when they deploy, Again, I would like you all to remember the first use case that we talked about. This large global retail company, of course, they are generating a lot of data. So how to manage the data across this disparate and distributed infrastructure? That's where the data management services come into picture. And once the data is all available, how to derive insights, what other analytics can we derive? What other insights can we derive out of that data? So we ourselves have all this infrastructure generated data, which we leverage to provide the cloud services on the top. And we'll talk more about the services. But the platform itself, you know, when you want to run all these services, you want to make sure that the platform is secure, it is compliant, you know, Different geographies, different customers require different compliance um, uh, requirements uh, come up, and the platform is secure and compliant. Also, these services can be uh, leveraged by customers on their own, or they can use the HPE managed services or the partners offering the managed services as well. So all of this is possible, and this platform is open. So not only HPE can provide the services, but we are also going to create an ecosystem to bring those innovations for the hybrid multi-cloud customers. So let's unpack the platform and the services a little bit. So I'm just showing three layers here. I've condensed the layers a little bit. The bottom layer is the HPE GreenLake platform. On top of the platform, we offer infrastructure and workload services. I'm sure you heard and you also watched the demos on the show floor regarding the networking services provided by Aruba Central, data ops management for managing your storage infrastructure. And in the storage land, we have services like backup and recovery, block as a service, disaster recovery, where you can also, in a backup and recovery, as an example, you can recover your uh, you know, data into a public cloud. 
So those are all possibilities that exist in this particular layer, infrastructure and workload services. And you just heard um, uh, in the keynote about the private cloud enterprise and private cloud business edition for workload orchestration. And those are all the services available for managing the infrastructure. Now, when you have, again and again, go back to that use case example, the, the breadth of that infrastructure, when deployed on this platform, we have the telemetry data, the events data, the logs information, and that can be used to derive insights. So I'm here showing one example where using that insights, the customer can derive sustainability information, carbon footprint, or the power utilization across that worldwide deployment. Now, the same logic can be applied to other services in the top layer, which is the value-added services layer, the observability, take that as an example. We talked quite a bit about OpsRAM in the last two days. We acquired OpsRAM in March of this year to provide IT operations management capability on the platform. With OpsRAM, we have visibility into multi-vendor infrastructure as well, across multi-cloud and uh, on-prem. So these are the kind of services that make the platform uh, suitable for the enterprises and relieve them off of that complexity that we discussed before. So this is how the the console of the GreenLake platform looks like, where the customers can go and avail any of the services. Now, when they, when they avail these services, of course they want a consistent experience because it's all coming from HPE uh, platform. So when you look at uh, the platform and the services, what we are delivering is a consistent end-to-end experience for our customers and also for the partners. So essentially, when a customer logs in to the platform, they create a workspace. So think of this as a day zero to day N journey. Day zero, they create a workspace into which they can now bring in all of their devices, subscriptions, enable all of their services. Remember, we talked about visibility. Now, when you look at this kind of an arrangement, a customer will easily be able to track where are the devices deployed worldwide, how many devices are active, how many devices are inactive and to be activated, how many subscriptions did I use, when do I need to renew, all that information is visible for the customer. Not just across networking, they are able to look at this across networking, storage, compute, and all other cloud services as well. So that is the workspace which gives that, does that magic. Now once you are in that workspace, the customers can look at before buying, they may want to uh, look at a demo of a particular product or look at trials and evaluations. That is all possible on the platform. Subscriptions, again, I mentioned about subscription management and device management, and onboarding. So imagine, again, that footprint we talked about, 100,000 APs. You want a very easy onboarding experience with those APs. When you have 10,000 servers or 20,000 servers, you want your onboarding experience need to be very quick and easy. So we provide that sort of an onboarding experience on the platform for our customers. Looking at your inventory uh, is, again, possible because it's all happening in one single place. Consumption analytics. This is not just across the on-prem, but 
also we are able to get the data from multi-cloud and show it across hybrid multi-cloud. When you have, of course, an infrastructure like this at this scale, problems will happen. This is life. So when problems happen, you want ability to look at which site is under issue, where is the criticality, and how you want to fix it. That is what we provide through the health dashboard and through the predictive analytics. Again, remember, we have so much data. It's all consolidated at the platform, and we have so much visibility that we can give predictive um, way of uh, creating cases. So that is how we are able to provide case management. If you look at all of this journey, day zero to day n, not for one service, but for every service that is coming on the platform, just imagine how your life can be made simple. That is the power of the platform. That is what we are achieving with this journey to one that you have heard many, many times. So now let's again look at this customer example. Uh, we discussed about the complexities. We discussed about what the platform enables. When this customer uses this platform now, they're able to bring on the various infrastructure services, the cloud services, so they can manage, build, manage, operate in a consistent manner across this distributed infrastructure. So this is the value that we are bringing to uh, the customers. And again, because it's a one single place that we are enabling these services, and this platform is open, so the innovations can come from HPE or through our partners and ecosystem that will be made available on the platform. So I think this is, I am truly excited what the platform can offer, because when you look at different vendors or the public clouds, they solve all of these problems in their own environment. No one is focused on how to solve these problems in a hybrid multi-cloud environment, which is what we are trying to achieve with the HPE GreenLake Edge to Cloud platform. So that is the value we bring to uh, bear. Now I would like to invite um, some of our customers to share their thoughts on uh, what the platform is offering for them. So with that, let me bring Jonathan Knopp to the stage to share what is uh, Verizon Business doing with our GreenLake cloud platform. Please welcome Jonathan. Thank you, Vata. Thank you for inviting me. Welcome. To this great event, and I was here, um, I think, about two months ago, actually, at Atmosphere uh, 23. So I, I had to wear a little bit of color here. <laughs> and uh, not only because of that, but also because Aruba Central is a key part of what we're involved in at Verizon. Excellent, excellent. So Verizon is a household brand name. I use Verizon as well. So can you tell us a little bit about Verizon business and um, what do they do? Sure, yes, I'm part of Verizon Business. Uh, uh, Verizon Business does about 31 billion in revenue in 2022, which is about 23% of overall Verizon revenue for the year. Uh, they service about, or provide services to about 99% of the Fortune 500 countries, uh, or companies <laughs> around the world, many countries. Um, and then also for myself, I'm, I'm in the product management group um, in Verizon Business, um, focused on managed services particularly. Uh, a few data points, a few more data points about Verizon Business. Uh, they provide connectivity services, both wireless, wireline, you know, even to other carriers, uh, enterprises, et cetera. Uh, they're a big managed communication solutions provider, and, and they're also a uh, very well-known you know, security provider uh, on the global front. Uh, myself, I'm in product management. Um, I focus on um, strategy. Uh, focused on developing our campus strategy, 
I uh, work with network transformation solutions, designing solutions, productizing them, taking them from inception to, to launch. Uh, and then also been focused on zero trust uh, architectures as that's another key uh, uh, important topic today. Yeah, excellent. So that's a massive uh, size Verizon business. So maybe you can give us some examples of the types of customers Verizon business serves and what are their challenges? Sure. Um, well, you, you put up a list of verticals up there. I was going to have a similar list. Uh, some of the big ones, and I kind of put them in uh, the list, I think, in terms of the ones that I'm focused on. I guess as I'm talking today, it's more of, you know, what area am I focused on? It's medium to large scale enterprises, typically for the managed services when we first design and build them, then we scale them down. But uh, retail is a, is a, is a big uh, vertical, finance, manufacturing, uh, healthcare, transportation, um, hospitality, these are all key verticals uh, that we're focused on. So, so the example that I showed before, does that resonate? Do you see very that kind much. of environment? Yes, very much. We'll have, a, we'll have an example of one of our customers that is similar. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> um, okay. And also, uh, I guess from a challenge perspective, you asked me about the challenges, yes. right? Yes. So I, I, there's many challenges, but I looked at this from a perspective of you know, high level, what are the real you know, big picture challenges that, that enterprises are facing? We as a provider need to solve those challenges. Uh, using uh, the tools that HP uh, River are providing for us. So uh, digital transformation, I think, is the big challenge. It's been there for some years now. Um, you know, IDC said in 2019 that, uh, you know, as enterprises are uh, attempting to do digital transformation, it's becoming very clear, it's becoming plain that without network transformation, there will be no digital transformation. So that was a key point. Network transformation is, is foundational to digital transformation. Uh, and the second point on cybersecurity, uh, more recent, 2023 here, beginning of the year, the, the World Economic Forum met and they published a great uh, report on cybersecurity. They, they interviewed the cybersecurity leaders um, from all over the world and the top two uh, answers to the question of, you know, if what, uh, what initiatives could enterprise take over the next 12 months that would have maybe the, the most positive impact on their cybersecurity strategy, the first uh, point that they made was to uh, do more cloud-based services, okay? So cloud-based services can refresh uh, and transform your, your, uh, your enterprise network. Uh, and then the second thing was um, to, um, I'm trying to remember the second thing, but, but cloud-based services uh, was, was a big thing and the network transformation was really the other aspect of that. So those two things you see, they kind of dovetail. Yeah. And so network transformation is a key tenant, but the question is how do you do it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you look at the scale that we talked about, so many edge locations, you need connectivity. That's the number one, <laughs> yes. right? So yes. network transformation yes. absolutely is a key one. So could you share the journey to solve your customer challenges? So how is HPE GreenLake platform helping you in this sure. journey? Sure. Yeah, I think the word journey is a key word. So we've been on a journey with, uh, H with Aruba and HP. Uh, I've been on it since 2020 for the past you know, three years, but we were, we were engaged with Aruba in 2019, and I think the big challenge we saw, you know, pre, let's say pre-GreenLake, uh, was that um, these applications tend to be, uh, for us, we need to deploy a standalone application, a dedicated instance. We can't do a shared environment for these large customers. So how do you do that? How do you create a multi-tenant environment when you need to have dedicated instances for each customer at, at high scale? Okay, so that was a, you know, so what we had done in, in 2021, we've launched a couple customers, large customers, um, that um, leveraged Aruba Central, but we didn't have GreenLake. Uh, so GreenLake really became a game changer, and we'll kind of talk about that. Um, uh, the, the customer, the, the first customer was a large retail customer with, uh, we were focused on U.S. kind of uh, deployments, but over 9,000 locations, like retail stores, uh, over like 150 uh, corporate offices, data warehouses, so you have a wide variety of infrastructure that's required. Uh, this is uh, like 100,000 devices, uh, so the, the scale is similar to what you're showing uh, on your slide there. Uh, the other customer, and that was US-based, so we had a Aruba Central Instance in the US, we also had an EMEA customer, grocery store chain, we have over 3,000 stores there where we, we stood up Aruba Central for switching and for wireless access, uh, so that's another example, but this was all pre-GreenLake. Pre um, as we, um, and then we're also looking at security as well, and so again, that would be another standalone application. So again, you, you have to stand up all these individual instances, it becomes complex and challenging, expensive to operate. Uh, with 
GreenLake, however, uh, we see that we can provide some uh, real benefits here and we can solve some of these challenges uh, because essentially GreenLake is abstracting out the front end, the management of the data, the customer information, all of that, the, the connectivity that we need to get into the platform, we can do it once uh, and then just send data in and let uh, HP and GreenLake figure out where to route the data. So th it's been a huge game changer for us. Um, customers are requiring, uh, they're looking for the unified infrastructure, they're looking for uh, cloud, cloud-based management, and they're also looking for policy-driven networks. So I think the combination of, of GreenLake with Aruba Central enables that for the customer and enables us to do it in a costly, uh, cost-efficient manner. So, you know, there are many customers who want uh, providers like Verizon Business to do their MSPs. So what other services can you offer using this HPE GreenLake platform? <clears throat> How is it helping your end customers in embracing more and more services from us. Okay. Uh, yeah, so from an MSP perspective, you know, we're in the middle, and so we need to be able to take your tools and operate them in an efficient manner to provide the, the, the um, service that the customers are looking for, rather than going directly to you. So that creates some unique challenges. The, the biggest challenge is really uh, you need a multi, some, something like a multi-tenant environment where we can manage, we have a single point of entry uh, for all types of functions, for, for data collection, et cetera, for monitoring. We can build that once and then we can just connect customers in and have the data routed. That's, that's how we need to do it. So that didn't exist before GreenLake. Um, so you know, the, the, the benefit of GreenLake was you know, the scalability that it offered, um, the efficiency, and that's the one we'll drill down a little bit more on, uh, that's a big, big ticket item. And then extensibility, we can add other applications. We'll talk about that, that in a minute. And also usage-based um, commercial uh, plans. So we have, you know, subscriptions, but we also want to go to usage-based, so we can do consumption-based models where customers want to pay as they go. Um, efficiency is really, I think, the, the key thing. We, we needed to have a centralized platform that we could design in our you know, Verizon connectivity into it. We have to have Verizon connecting in, we have to have the customers connecting in, this all has to be secure. Verizon's very big on security. Um, we have monitoring where we have real-time monitoring, seven by 24 going on for every customer device and every customer network around the world at every location you know, simultaneously. So the only way we could really do that cost-effectively uh, was through, ad by adding GreenLake to Aruba Central, which already scaled but now we have that multi-tenant single point of entry for Verizon. It's a, it, like I said, that's a huge game changer for us. And that really solved the problems we had in, in 2019, 2020. Going into 2021, we realized, hey, we, now we have what we need to go forward, and that's what we're, we're focused on today. So that's great. So thank you. Thank you for being a great partner. And uh, you know, we look forward to seeing more and more services come from Verizon Business, and happy to partner with you in this journey. Yeah, we're looking forward to it as well. We worked very closely with you the last two or three years. We'll continue to do so. We're looking at bringing security into this platform. You asked me about that. So Aruba Central is a big one. We want to continue building that out with you, adding more automation, more APIs, helping you working you know, together with you to provide the best service possible, and then also extend that service with other applications like ClearPass, like UXI, things like yep. that. So we're very excited, and, and uh, we're really appreciative of the work that HP is doing. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. Very welcome. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thank you. So um, yesterday you heard Antonio and Fidelma talk about OpsRamp. OpsRamp is a key acquisition that we did this year and that is uh, being integrated into the GreenLake platform. There are many customers who are enjoying OpsRamp, so let's uh, hear from one of our happy OpsRamp customers. I would like to welcome Michael onto stage. Michael is from EchoStar, and he will share with us his journey and how he is leveraging OpsRamp capabilities. So with that, welcome, Michael. So great to have you, Michael. So you were on stage with uh, Fidelma yesterday, yes, and was. you talked about OpsRamp, um, and uh, you know you said that OpsRamp is a trusted partner. Uh, their engineers help you a lot when you uh, when you face some issues in your network. 
So could you share more about EchoStar and what is your role at EchoStar? Sure, EchoStar is a global communications company focused on satellite communications. We have uh, additional services on top of that for managing, uh, managing networks, uh, signage and a lot of other services that we provide as well. Um, what I do is I, so, I focus on the IT operations management for the corporate IT side of the business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. So maybe if you can describe a little bit more about your IT environment. We know EchoStar as, uh, you know, EchoStar and satellites, you know, that's what we remember. So maybe if you can describe your IT environment before we dig deeper into the deployments. Sure. Uh, we have a very large on-prem facilities, large data centers with a lot of different servers um, in a lot of different locations doing engineering work and uh, all of the development that we do for our satellites. And we also have, in the last couple of years, started moving stuff into different clouds and we've moved stuff into the three big clouds, you know, Azure, um, GCP, and um, uh, uh, Amazon. And we've been struggling as we go through that to how we manage it. Yeah. But we've been growing like everybody else does, trying to figure out, okay, let's put something in there and see, how, see what we need to do. Um, the areas that we've really struggled on is how do we actually manage that cloud as well as we're trying to do? Mm -hmm. and our legacy tools were struggling to be able to monitor the applications, that, whether it be a, a PaaS or on or a actual native cloud service. I see. So you have a big uh, then multi-cloud uh, operations then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So at what point did you decide to invest in OpsRAM, and uh, why did you choose OpsRAM? Because there are a variety of tools available out there. Why did you choose OpsRAM? There's a lot of different tools out there, and we started about a year and a half ago looking at uh, how do we, where do we go and how do we replace this, and in that time, we, we dug into what is our real requirements, how do we grow with those requirements, and how do we actually make sure we're getting what we want, and we literally brought in five different vendors to do proof of concepts, well, we actually set up systems, we tested them, and in the end, we ended up you know, marking a lot of them off. They had a lot of capabilities, but they just weren't as, as broad or as fresh, you know, looking forward as all of the cloud stuff that we needed to do. OpsRamp met that needs. Um, as we were going through these testing processes, OpsRamp actually was the fastest to get stood up and start running testing. I see. Um, some of them took a couple weeks to actually get it up and running so we could actually see what it looked like. Mm -hmm. OpsRamp was a couple days. I see. And in our testing, one of our big pieces that we're looking for is how do we actually reduce the noise that we get? Exactly. And we were very lucky with OpsRamp with their AI model. We were actually reducing that noise by easily 80% within the first month of testing. Wow, that's very impressive. So I think the first step to remediation is how you can reduce the noise and really take out the signals so that you can act upon them, right? So that's very impressive. So maybe if you can discuss, um, you know, about the OpsRamp integrations. I know OpsRamp has extensive integrations. What integrations were you using from OpsRamp in your environment? So we've already started off integrating up upside, where we actually move OpsRamp data into our service. Now we're using OpsRamp to populate our CMDB within ServiceNow. We're also using um, so, uh, X Matters, so all of the alerts go through, um, coming out of uh, OpsRamp go into X Matters, and that's how we actually um, integrate. We have a lot of other tools that integrate to that for escalation management of our out, uh, all of our alerts that we do have. Um, then we also have integrated into our all three native clouds where we're monitoring um, the cloud interfaces directly from OpsRamp. We're also monitoring server-side stuff in those clouds. Um, and we're, we're monitoring, we have a tool for monitoring our SAP system mm -hmm. because SAP is a very unique tool. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a tool, Avantra, to monitor that. And all of those 
uh, alerts come into OpsRamp, and we also have Splunk and Rapid7 and a couple other security tools that feed into OpsRamp that then correlate everything and really help us to um, see it all in one place. So you are basically using the full stack observability capabilities of OpsRamp. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Very well, very well. So what key benefits are you providing to your customers? You know, how is, how is your uh, internal employees and the developers, how are they feeling once you started using OpsRamp uh, in your infrastructure? The biggest thing that they've, they've seen is two, twofold. Um, the reduction of alerts based on the correlation engine and the AI ops being able to correlate all of the different things that could happen downstream from a device that may have an issue. Um, and the second one is really how they actually can see, they can, the, all of my developers, they have access to OpsRamp so they could see what, where their systems are, what's going on with it, what we're seeing and why. Oh, so that's interesting. So you have not only the IT operations, but the developers uh, also using the OpsRamp Absolutely. monitor. That's excellent. So thank you, Michael. Thank you for sharing these insights. And uh, uh, you know, I know OpsRamp is providing you a lot of great value, looks like, in your environment. And if there is anything that we can do in the future with the GreenLake platform, adding more value for your infrastructure and operations, we are here. So we would love to partner with you, continue to partner with you. So thank you. Thank you for sharing all your I'm insights. I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. So you heard from uh, Jonathan, Verizon Business, Michael from EchoStar, as to how they are using HPE GreenLake platform. I think now I would like to uh, introduce our uh, engineering leaders Rafi and also Jens to show a quick demo of the, all the uh, platform capabilities. So welcome Rafi and Jens. Thank you so much. Lata. Hello everybody. Thank you very much. Jens. Hello I'm Rafi. Run into you. Yeah, great seeing you as well. It was a great job on that acquisition recently, but you know I have an issue. Um, we just closed it with your help, but now what we need to do is bring in all these users, and they came in with their own domain. And I know we have to take downtime for that. My question to you is, when can we take some downtime? Well, as you know, we've uh, recently started using the GreenLake Cloud Platform as part of that uh, purchase that we did a couple quarters ago. Mm -hmm. And with that, we actually don't need to go and do uh, downtime on that. That's we can do this live. So we'll go and do a, show you how to do that, and then we can just go and get that up and running. So we go into uh, the system and we go and uh, manage our workspaces. Uh, we'll go into authentication and then we'll go and set up a SAML connection. We put in our SAML data information in here and then we hit enter to get it to go and it'll actually integrate their environment for us uh, with uh, no downtime. That's beautiful. So we're able to bring their users in with their own domain into our policies and that doesn't require any downtime. That is correct. That's beautiful. Uh, but now with that uh, acquisition coming in, people are asking for more resources, more servers, more storage arrays and switches. Um, and you know me, I want to start by knowing where are, are uh, all of these devices installed today. I know you had that spreadsheet that took about a week to update last time. I need it by Monday. Okay, we've stopped using that spreadsheet. It was always out of date. Like it just didn't work for us. We were never able to go and really keep an eye on it. But the GreenLake Cloud Platform has really helped us uh, with uh, managing our, in our infrastructure and our environment. So they've actually got a live list of all of our equipment uh, that we have installed. And it uh, tells us details on locations where it's installed, whether it's up for renewals, uh, subscription information. Uh, but it's even more than that. We've been recently given access to a uh, new uh, technical preview where we can go and see where the equipment is installed locally. Show me. So let me show you where that is. So we click on the map. And as you can see on our map, we have equipment installed all over the globe. And we know what's there and how many devices are in those locations. That's beautiful. I love that we don't need spreadsheets and we have that map view. But now looking at that map, the next thing is obviously I need to send people over 
to upgrade operating systems on all of these servers worldwide. So with that map in mind, what is the budget that you need to send people over? Well, let's go and plan on not uh, using a budget to go and send people uh, anywhere. We can do all of this uh, deployment remotely. Wow. So if we go back onto the home screen and we can get into the computer ops management, you can see that we have our various computer groups set up. But let's set up a new server group for us uh, to go and deploy uh, environments. So let's go and hit details. We'll go and set up the new server group here. We'll create it. We'll put in the information. Just call this a test operating system install here. Uh, we will go and put the operating system that we want to deploy on it. And uh, then we will go and review it create the uh, group for us. And then once we've got the group created, I can go into the server groups and I can go and click on my operating system deployment that I just created and then go and tell it to go and install the operating system. But I can go beyond that. I can go and take all of those and do BIOS updates remotely. I can go and spend the time and do firmware updates. So this is going to go and help a lot with uh, simplifying our uh, deployment times and really reduce the uh, effort that we have to go and send people around. Absolutely, thank you so much. So you're able to create groups and by policy upgrade firmware and operating system across the world through the HP GreenLake platform. Absolutely, let me just go and deploy this operating system right now. And we've got the operating system deployed and it actually gives me a green that it has been deployed. That's great, that's great, but you've deployed it, that's nice, that's day one. What about day two operations? All right, so for day two operations, we'll go back into the home screen, uh, which is our landing spot for everything, mm -hmm. and we have a wellness dashboard. If we go into the wellness dashboard, we get a view of everything that's going on in our environment. And as you can see last week, we had some events occur. Uh, the beautiful thing, all those events that did occur, we can see that they have all created a case. And these cases was automatically created, so we don't have to go and manually create those cases uh, to go and get the support that we need. But it goes beyond that, that if I go into the system and look at the individual items, it actually tells us what the recommended actions are to go and resolve this. So this is going to really reduce our, time, our uh, mean time to resolution on these problems and really help improve the customer experience. That's really, really great. And I think these combining day one and day two operations into the HPE GreenLake platform will really help us. But it is the HPE GreenLake platform. While we've standardized on HPE going forward, we have so much equipment from other vendors. I don't think they even have those platforms for them. No, we started looking at all the various options that were out there, and then uh, we heard that HPE went and acquired OpsRamp, which uh, is an amazing tool. So we actually went and started deploying that into our environment so that we could go and have a look at everything that is in our environment. And as you know, we do have a footprint in AWS, we have a footprint in Azure, but let's go and have a look at all of the different vendors that we support here, but we really wanna see how are we using our environment inside AWS. So let's go on to the AWS overview, and I can actually get a deep dive look at what is happening in the environment in AWS, from EC2 instances, uh, databases, from load balancing, for our SNS services, and how much are we actually utilizing on that? That's great. So with OpsRamp being a part of the HP GreenLake platform, you get a view of this hybrid, multi-tenant, multi-cloud, and multi-vendor environment that we have. Yes. That's great. But you know, our developers, they want to go beyond infrastructure. They want to go into the Kubernetes world. Can we do that? Yeah, so OpsRamp will allow us to go and look at uh, the Kubernetes environment. So we just go and have a look at our Kubernetes overview. And currently, we've got a small deployment that we're actually looking to expand on. We only have five clusters, and we're able to go and see how they are performing, and we can do the maintenance and management of that from the platform here. And then we also have a correlated uh, alert engine inside this, which is going to go and help us. So if we go into command center here, and I can go to alerts, we can go and see all these alerts, but it's unlike any other alert system that we've ever used. Like, it takes the AI and 
and correlates all of our alerts. So we've seen a significant reduction in that in which, quite frankly, I'm not being woken up in the middle of the night from all these alerts. That's great, that's great. So with that HPE GreenLake platform, we're able to go through users, devices, day one, day two, across the estate, multi-cloud, multi-vendor, um, and really deal all with it all the way up to the Kubernetes layer. That's great, I think we can go home early today. Oh, absolutely, let's go and do that. Okay. Actually, I might have spoken too soon. Oh. Looks like we have a board meeting coming up where I am on the agenda to talk about sustainability. Can oh. you do anything about sustainability? Yeah, so sustainability, it's a massive topic for everybody. I know that we had made a pledge to go and be sustainable uh, by 2030 and mm -hmm. have it been uh, carbon neutral. Mm -hmm. And I, how are we measuring that has been a real challenge for us. Uh, we've seen with uh, HP GreenLake platform that they actually have added a sustainability dashboard to us that can tell us what our carbon footprint is for our environments, what that, is, what that actually translates into, into power consumption, and what the cost aspects of that. And I can go and export that and create a report on that in an Excel spreadsheet, and then we can manipulate that to go and provide a detailed report to the board. That's beautiful. Is it then able to go back and tell me how to really improve on our sustainability metrics. Absolutely, we could actually filter on the environment and then go and put, say what are the systems that we want to look at and see which systems are, going, are using the largest amount of power or have the largest impact on our carbon footprint. How do we go and then uh, figure out how to go and uh, optimize that? And that, that will allow us to go and really dive in and optimize that and get closer to our carbon neutral uh, footprint that we want. This is great, Jens. Thank you very, very much. Let me welcome Lata back on stage. Thank you, Lata. You can leave it. Thank you. Thank you, Rafi, and thank you, Jens. So, you heard from our customers how they are deriving value out of the HPE GreenLake platform. You heard from our engineering experts how the platform works, and they have shown the capabilities in a demo format. So yes, the hybrid uh, multi-cloud is a norm in, in the current uh, industry. And uh, enterprise IT systems are complex in this world, but you are covered. With the HPE GreenLake platform, we simplify your hybrid cloud journey. So whatever you have seen in terms of the capabilities today, we continue to innovate. We are adding more functionality onto the platform. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to work together and co-innovate, co-develop. So help us to get there. Help us help you. So we look forward to working with you, each and every one of you, to make this platform robust and provide solutions uh, through your hybrid multi-cloud journey. So with that, thank you everyone for joining and uh, really appreciate you taking the time. <laughs>